good afternoon everyone hope you're all doing well and staying safe thank you for taking our time to attend this webinar i'm nandini barotra i lead the oracle engagements at clover infotech we're all experiencing an unprecedented challenge with covid-19 the demand across the industry is for agile and cost effective platforms that enable application modernization and fast to go to market without compromising on performance or security oracle linux is one such platform let's hear from our experts as to how it can help you create an agile and modernized enterprise to navigate through these challenging times without further ado let me introduce our first speaker mr shrikant navelkar shrikant is director at clover infotech he manages oracle relationships and the us business shrikant is an industry veteran handling oracle technologies for over 25 years across databases and operating systems to cloud native applications and customer experience plus platforms Let's welcome Shrikant to take it over from here. Yeah, hi Nandini. Thanks. Uh, I hope uh, I'm audible. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, joining. We have a lot of points to discuss, so I will uh, straight away. You know, we'll go to our call. Uh, let me introduce uh, my friend and colleague from Oracle, uh, Deepak Singh. Uh, Deepak is a principal consultant from Oracle, and he has a extensive experience uh, working with enterprise customers uh, we had good um, engagement with him for a lot of customers and um, we thought that he is the best uh, from oracle at this stage you know to give us the uh, you know the complete uh, you know uh, background of the platform uh, let me tell you a couple of minutes about the background i mean why we thought about uh, this uh, webinar Uh, well while well, working with many customers uh, in india and outside india we come across a lot of questions about oracle linux and as a partner uh, yes we we address uh, these questions um, we also help customers to create poc environments we help them to migrate to oracle linux um, and and then we provide the support uh, in a post migration uh, but we thought it would be better if we can validate all our thoughts about oracle linux uh, directly Uh, with oracle along with you and that's why we thought about uh, this webinar so again uh, thanks a lot for joining uh, to start to with uh, let me take you uh, uh, you know uh, around uh, 20 years back sometime in uh, late 90s and early 2000 uh, the usage of linux uh, at that time was very different uh, it was mainly for the non enterprise applications like email servers proxy servers firewalls and ftp server at that time the focus from the customer was on the low cost but a stable operating system which can run on intel or the amd platform and that time many customers uh, started using different flavors of linux i mean you had ubuntu at some time you had suse you have centos uh, the challenge at that time uh, was uh, there was very little differentiation you know between the distribution you know you know that time even red hat was there that was a predominant platform at that time uh, but the the, uh, the uh, advantage with red hat at that time was they had built or they have invested in building the support infrastructure globally and that's why i think they captured the market you know you know in a big way well when oracle invested in linux in early 2000 the approach was very different uh their message was very uh, uh straightforward use your enterprise uh, uh, softwares on linux or on oracle linux uh, over the period of time they made a massive investment in uh, oracle linux and made it as a standard platform for them internally so oracle is the largest one of the largest users of oracle linux sometimes i get questions from the customer is that um, uh what are the differentiation or more importantly how big is oracle linux worldwide at this stage so uh, before uh, getting deeper into the call let me give you around 3 to 4 points around how big is oracle uh, linux at this stage uh, my first uh, point and my first observation is that see oracle has around 21 cloud data centers at this stage worldwide and they will be uh, extending that to around 35 data centers by the end of this year these are called uh, gen 2 data centers and all these data centers they run on thousands of servers on oracle linux uh, you know that's a massive usage uh, second is um, uh, you know i mean you must have heard from oracle about 
lift and shift of customers infrastructure and applications on the oracle cloud uh, the important point over here is that oracle is the only company which gives the guarantee of infrastructure availability on the cloud to their customers so if they're running oracle linux uh, in the cloud it's very important uh, you know you know that commitment you know matters a lot the third point is uh, oracle develops all their applications uh, databases uh, saas applications on oracle linux it's a it's a common platform within oracle for the development test and the deployment environment now you can imagine if saas applications running on cloud running on oracle linux uh they have to run in a very secure environment and they have to run on 24 by 7 and finally um uh, i mean you must have heard about oracle exa data uh, oracle exa data runs on oracle linux and now that's a pure enterprise platform so i don't think the question of uh, how big is oracle linux is um, is important now is important to understand what enterprise features oracle has added into oracle linux which are so crucial uh, for the customers to do that so uh, deepak um, <clears throat> if you can help me to understand if you can help our customers to understand what are those enterprise uh, features oracle has added into oracle linux sure thanks shikant uh, and welcome i welcome everybody uh, from oracle joining this call so uh, Shrikant, your understanding is pretty much right. Uh, Oracle Linux is crucial for Oracle. Okay, so let me use a few slides so that people on the call can visualize it. And uh, let me start first with the safe harbor statement. All right. So we're going to talk a lot about uh, things. Largely, we're going to talk about things which are already available, publicly available for a long time, and we will include a few things which are a bit directional. So. let's move on let me tell you what how big is oracle linux or so rome was not built in a day and uh, certainly certainly oracle's affinity to linux is not new so oracle has been a leader in contribution into open source projects and linux since 1998 in fact we were the first commercial rdbms to port our rdbms onto linux so as you can see on the slide there are over the years we have contributed many important uh pieces uh, to the open source community linux more specifically however the biggest change is about a decade ago in 2006 when we announced commercial support okay so not only oracle was uh, you know contributing code upstream to other vendors like red hat or suse who were uh, you, which were the you know the most common platforms earlier in 2006 oracle decided to take on the entire linux support and start supporting linux as a product okay for and the idea was very simple so we never uh, wanted it wanted to be a os company oracle if you uh, if you ask anybody is known as a application and database company today we are end to end we manufacture from applications to saas to hardware and the os everything in between right so we are a full scale enterprise vendor and linux is a very very important piece in that because that helps us complete the entire story so in fact you talked about uh, the gen 2 clouds both generation 1 and generation 2 clouds uh, use oracle linux in fact if i were to extend that uh, in more detail or to give you a sense of how big oracle linux is inside oracle we run hundreds of thousands of servers everything from product development to oracle cloud to exa systems that our customers use are powered by oracle linux if you look at uh, the india context specifically you know all the big banks uh, in india are using oracle linux in one shape or other most of the big the databases today are on exa and that's is, that is powered by uh, oracle linux we also do all the development on uh, oracle linux so all the databases or middleware etc that the customers are installing on other uh, you know competitive linux distribution like suse or red hat they're actually built on oracle linux they're tested on oracle linux and any certification that we issue for red hat is only a paper cert so inside oracle we are you are right, we are a huge huge customer of oracle linux we run millions of transactions per day it is i can say uh, in one statement that it is the lifeblood and core of our cloud strategy 
Now, let me tell you, uh, so you raised another important point, you know, how is Oracle making Linux more enterprise? So Oracle's focus is to make a vanilla Linux more optimized and complete, to improve performance of all the workloads and to offer comprehensive tool set to manage it rather than selling, you know, add-ons like a pizza shop. So some of the OS vendors, what they do is they sell the OS and then if you want to do high availability, you have to buy a set add-on, et cetera, et cetera. I compare that to a pizzeria, right? You go to buy a pizza, they give you a basic pizza, but if you want more toppings or you want it to be more tasty, you have to pay extra. Oracle Linux is more like a buffet. Uh, it's a, you know, at a single price, eat all you can kind of a, <laughs> a system if you, you know, try to compare that. And the uh, main idea is to drive two important, uh, rather, rather a few, three or four important IT imperatives. First is faster delivery of applications. How we can give you tool sets so that you can uh, do things faster. You talk about fail fast and fail often, DevOps methodology. So we include tools for that. You talk about simplification and that's a huge uh, area. So we integrate the entire stack. We test the entire stack. So the customers do not have to, you know, uh, get use the elbow grease or do have to do things DIY way. Uh, we think it for them, but we also keep it very, very open. So for example, if you don't like enterprise manager, you're free to use, uh, uh, you know, puppet for your patch deployment. We'll go more on that. Uh, we will cover more on that, but we keep it very, very open. And to start with, we give you a very simple integrated stack. Now the crutch word is stack. We do not sell operating system. And we'll go over that more if you have more questions on that. Right? And at the same time, uh, managing costs. So because that's very, very important. So we help you manage cost in your digital transformation. So these are, I would say, some of the most important or top level things. In addition, the biggest focus in Oracle for all products is security and compliance. It runs across all the products. If you talk about database, we had the database vault from the very beginning. Uh, we had security features on the WebLogic for a long time now. And the same thing we are doing on, on Linux. So if you look at our you know, security certifications, we are already EAL4 certified. We have FIPS 142 uh, compliance. We were actually the first distribution to get NIAP certification, which is a very difficult certification to get because uh, the US Department of Defense uses it to procure secure uh, platforms. We also uh, do a lot of innovation. So most of the innovation that you see uh, that we do on enterprise space is largely on performance and on security, right? Like case splice. So we have a product called case splice as part of the Oracle Linux offering, which helps you patch vulnerabilities in real time. So you can actually forget about the zero day vulnerabilities. As soon as a vulnerability is out, uh, we provide a patch to our customers in the recent past, in the last one or two years, I've seen many critical vulnerabilities, even branded ones like uh, dirty cow or open uh, heart bleed vulnerability for that open SSL vulnerability. We also saw the DNS cache exploit. So all those vulnerabilities uh, are patched using case flies in real time. And uh, that that's what makes uh, a plain vanilla Linux, more enterprise ready, in my opinion. At the same time, we do a lot of work in improving performance, right? So the two key things on security is meeting compliance requirements and securing your IT environments. So we give you all the tool set for that. Yeah, thanks, Deepak. I think that's, you know, that's very important because uh, those days have gone where you select a product or platform only for the features. Now you need to consider the compliance, you need to consider the security, you need to consider the hybrid nature of deployment of your application on premise, on Linux. So you require something or you require a platform which is common in your development environment, in your test environment, in your, uh, in your on production environment, and maybe even in the cloud environment. So that, uh, you know, there is no pressure on developers to keep on thinking about the portability of the code when they move from you know one area to another one, you know and that's very interesting. And your case splice feature, uh, you know, you know, has been very very important. I mean, I studied that we implemented at uh, multiple locations where uh, customers who are running uh, applications uh, they want to patch uh, the kernel at the runtime, 
And I remember a couple of cases happened in US uh, where the security breach happened because the IT could not patch uh, the platform in time and they kept it uh, postponing that even if the patch was available because uh, they, 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 they were thinking that, oh, I, I may not uh, get an uh, approval from the business to, uh, you know, to um, uh, take the application down or the downtime for that. It's a very, very important feature and, and I'm sure uh, our customers uh, you know, will evaluate and we will also help them to evaluate on that. So coming back now to the original point. So customers who are running uh, legacy applications or uh, you know, legacy platform on the Unix, uh, you know, we can uh, actually take them to the Intel platform. The performance is guaranteed. The Intel has a lot of uh, innovations now and, we can, and Oracle has taken full advantage of that. Uh, and at the same time, you you are uh, you know putting features on the compliance, you're putting putting features on the enterprise, and at the same time, you have reduced the cost. I mean, there's one point uh, which uh, unfortunately we don't have time over here, but uh, we will keep on um, uh, you know mentioning this to our customer is that can I help to op or can I help them to optimize their uh, Oracle investment uh, uh, you know on Oracle Linux platform? And and the answer is yes. So uh, the cost can come down, the enterprise features are there, the security is there, the compliance are there. I think these are what a typical uh, you know, enterprise will, you know, will definitely will look into it. Now the question I have in my mind and you know, which I've been uh, you know, you know, talking to this is that uh, you know, I strongly believe that Oracle uh, workloads, database, uh, middleware like WebLogic, they run far better on Oracle Linux. And one of the common reason, or one of the obvious reason I have seen is that you have same company, you have uh, you know, joint development going on on Oracle Linux and on the Oracle other products, and they work together to develop some specific features uh, to ensure that the Oracle uh, workloads run faster and better on that. Um, uh, Deepak, is my understanding correct? Uh, can you help me to elaborate on that? Sure. Uh, in fact, it's one of the most commonly asked question uh, in my customer engagements also. So Oracle released a white paper document uh, a little while ago, uh, and we updated it again a couple of years ago uh, about why Oracle Linux is the best platform to run Oracle workloads. I'll just summarize some of the key points uh, which are there in the white paper. So Oracle applications, middleware, database, they're all developed on Oracle Linux. There's a tight integration at the kernel level. So in Oracle Linux, as you're aware, there are two choice of kernels, uh, which we provide. We provide you a Red Hat compatible kernel, but we also uh, provide you a UEK kernel uh, without any extra cost. The UEK is the engineered kernel uh, built by Oracle. It has many uh, intrinsic features in that, which are built by Oracle. So if you're running Oracle database, for example, I'll just give you one example, right? So if you're running Oracle database, now. Nowadays, you can put a flashcard, right? a PCIe flashcard onto a server for improving performance. But if you're running Oracle Linux, it automatically detects that you're running a flashcard and it'll enable a feature in the database or it'll give you an option to, it'll not automatically enable, basically the DB has to enable that feature. But it'll give you a feature to enable the level two cache on the flashcard. The, the tweaks like this, is what makes Exadata the best performing database platform ever, right? And there are more, uh, there are many such tweaks. So, I mean, theoretically, if you ask me, anybody can build a complete Exadata-like system also, if he has the exact same kind of hardware and Oracle Linux. So we're not limiting you at all onto Oracle Linux. Of course, Exadata has its advantages because of the hardware that comes bundled. But even on a X white box, uh, Dell, HP, or any, any other brand hardware, you can actually have the same software stack and you have those software performance optimizations in built into it, okay? Then there's a deep integration. So if you're running, uh, for example, Oracle workloads, uh, you are familiar with Enterprise Manager. Now you can integrate Enterprise Manager also to manage your Linux lifecycle. When I say lifecycle, I mean the full lifecycle, right? From provisioning to monitoring to patch management, decommissioning of servers, also compliance reporting. All that is managed through a single dashboard. So Again, you can look through the entire Oracle stack with a single pane of glass. So a deep integration is provided there. And of course, uh, TCO is uh, very, very important uh, 
Oracle database, I agree, is uh, not the cheapest database or Oracle applications are not cheapest. They offer a great value, but for customers who are trying to further optimize, uh, especially on x86 platform, I would say, uh, it gets difficult uh, to uh, do subcapacity licensing, especially if you're running virtualized, et cetera, if you're running you know, a virtualized database. So uh, that I'll, I'll cover on that a little bit more in the next slide, but let me just say that, you know, you, we can help you increase TCO also. And of course, uh, single throat to choke, frictionless support. So if you're running Oracle database or any of the Oracle workload, be it a application uh, or middleware, right? And you're running it on top of Oracle Linux, you have a single throat to choke. There is no more requirement to go from one vendor to another vendor. If you have a database performance issue, Oracle will solve that problem, whether it falls into the database space or the OS space. Tr traditionally, you would have to jump from you know, one vendor to another vendor. You have to go from, uh, let's say, if you're running Red Hat and Oracle database, you have to go from Red Hat to Oracle DB team and Oracle DB team back to Red Hat team. Because, uh, I mean, I, 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 I grade my hairs hair, uh, doing operation support. So I have, you know, before joining Oracle, I spent almost 13 years uh, doing production support for large banks. And it was very common case in those in those days, you know, that uh, there's a database issue, but then we have to raise two separate SRs, one with the database support and one with the OS support, and we have to do parallel uh, tracking of those. In Oracle, you can actually raise a collaborative SR, Collab SR, and uh, you can get frictionless support end to end. It's a single throat to choke. Uh, and and there are more reasons. So there are more technical reasons also, which are covered in more detail in this document, which I have just you know uh, screenshotted here. So I highly encourage our participants to go and read that. It's not a very lengthy document. It's about 25, 30 pages uh, of pure science. So I would encourage to go and read that. While, let me cover one more important topic, right? So TCO reduction. So let me also add a little bit about uh, KVM. So Oracle Linux KVM is a certified and supported hard partitioning technologies. So customers who are already using uh, OVM for hard partitioning, uh, typically install OVM to save database costs or application costs. They don't have to do that anymore. They can continue to use Oracle Linux KVM, uh, which is bundled with the product. We don't sell it separately. There is no extra cost for you. Uh, it's part of your uh, subscription. And you can use OLVM or Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager to manage a fleet of servers together. It has a lot of features. If you have interest in that, we'll do a separate session on that. But uh, Hard partitioning with Oracle Linux KVM is fully supported certified. Again, I'm uh, referencing a white paper document and I encourage people to go and read that, uh, which will tell them how you can install, let's say a four core database or a eight core database on a 40 core Intel server, right? And this is, uh, this is our USP. No other product can deliver this. Not Red Hat can deliver this, SUSE, Ubuntu. You can take any product, any Linux, nobody can deliver it. You can take any virtualization software, they cannot deliver it because it's, it's one of the advantage for Oracle customers that we bring onto the table. So I think these are uh, you know, two of the important points, Shrikant, uh, that you asked and I tried to answer them. I hope I'm, I'm answering them. Yeah, they were great. I mean, um, you know, uh, looking at the time constraint, I think you were uh, you know, absolutely on the point. Um, let's, you know, let's go ahead on this. Now, uh, it's good that you know you explain uh, you know the enterprise features. We explain about uh, you know how customer can reduce their TCOs about the KVMs and all that. Now, one of the let's you know let's think from customer perspective. Uh, when customer think about uh, changing their environment uh, from say Red Hat Linux to Oracle Linux, the last thing they want is to have any kind of disruption in their production environment. I mean, they can test it, they can test it for hundred times over there, but in the production environment, they don't want any disturbance, uh, you know, in a disturbance on this. But before that, let me, uh, you know, take it to one point. Is about the, I mean, I try my best to avoid the comparison between various platforms, but the comparison between Red Hat and Oracle is inevitable. And uh, I mean, Red Hat has been market leader for quite some time, and a lot of our customers are running their Oracle workloads on Oracle software. Uh, you covered a lot, no doubt about that. But if we just want to add a few points about uh, if they, I mean, customers who are running Oracle on Red Hat, uh, and if they don't shift Oracle Linux, uh, 
what are they missing and uh, what are the things you know they need to consider as the biggest advantage you know to move it to um, oracle learning just one or two points before i you know take it to the next one sure um, <laughs> in fact uh, you asked me uh, one of the most commonly asked question you know uh, differentiate between or compare against red hat right uh, i also don't like comparing that uh, more often because it's an unfair advantage to oracle linux if you try to compare oracle linux to red hat red hat linux is just an operating system it is nothing more than an operating system oracle linux on the other hand is a complete operating environment okay so that makes them very very different now i'll try to explain using the next few slides so let me first of all explain what is oracle linux right so oracle linux is a complete offering what you get is uh, i mean how do you subscribe oracle linux is basically you just count the number of physical servers okay uh, so it's as simple as that if you look at red hat linux let me try to compare right so you have to buy the os you have to buy smart management spend money on high availability you have to buy virtualization uh, if you want to do containerization you have to buy openshift uh, you want to do software defined storage you have to buy either ceph or gluster uh, you need cloud access if you want to move to cloud and on top of that you have to count socket pairs number of vms networking is a separate add-on storage size is another variant uh, and on-premise or cloud is yet another vector which makes it very very complex instead if you want to compare all that is given to you as part of a single subscription in a very easy to understand subscription format uh, it, it's very very cost effective at the same time it is very easy from a contractual standpoint so like i said you know uh, i have a lot of respect for red hat actually uh, they're a respectable company uh, but they just got acquired by ibm uh, so yeah so <laughs> right now i mean i i think they're in a bit of flux uh, in my opinion uh, and they're only in one space which is operating system predominantly red hat linux right other areas they're trying but maybe successful maybe not successful again their approach is different than oracle's approach and i understand the i mean because they have business reasons to be like that uh, they were a pure os company so they have to monetize everything oracle uh, is a much larger company so i would say it is about economies of scale so oracle is a huge organization and oracle linux and virtualization are strategic products to us uh, these are strategic because they help our customers uh, to adopt uh, the Oracle database application, cloud technologies easier and faster. At the same time, uh, Oracle Linux is available on all clouds, right? So if you want to run it on, for example, AWS or Azure, it's a certified cloud platform. You can run it freely. Uh, many customers will use Oracle Linux uh, with SAP on public clouds. We are, we are, I think, one of the only certified vendor for SAP workloads. So there are distinct advantages on all platforms. So Oracle Linux, uh, again, is a complete operating environment, whereas Red Hat, is, uh, Red Hat Linux is just a distribution or operating system. In the uh, Oracle Linux operating environment, we give you three distinct products. One is the OS itself, which I talked uh, a lot about so far. There is server virtualization, which I talked a little bit about in the uh, Oracle database slides a couple of slides ago and the cloud native environment. Uh, so I've not covered a lot on cloud native environment, but Oracle does include uh, a complete ecosystem of containerizing containerization application. To explain a little bit more on Oracle virtualization, which is a bundled solution. This is not OVM. This is a different component. It is, it is not to be purchased separately, right? OVM you had to buy separately. OLVM or Oracle Linux KVM is bundled with the product. It has, uh, earlier we were only supporting Oracle Linux KVM, which is to virtualize a single host. But uh, recently, a few months ago, we introduced Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager, which is the management layer. And now you can actually have uh, a very comparable product to OVM or VMware or RHEV, which is a full scale virtualization solution. You can create clusters of multiple physical servers. Uh, the good thing is that it is, it is based on upstream open source project called over but it is end-to-end -end integrated tested and supported by oracle so you do not have to go to community to get support oracle will support and will give you patches 
for this product. And it also includes some of the most commonly asked features on OVM. So uh, customers who use OVM or are already on OVM right now, uh, typically ask us that, can I have role-based access control or snapshot? So both those features are added and uh, you know you can use them on uh, Oracle Linux today with KVM. So moving on to the next slide, uh, the Linux cloud native environment. Uh, we include a suite of open source tools. Uh, they are tested to work together. Uh, in, I mean, we in implement the entire CI CD or the DevOps life cycle into that. We support things like uh, Docker, RunC, and Kubernetes. So, I mean, these are the kind of things that we add to make uh, you know, a complete stack for Oracle Linux. On top of that, uh, let me just try to summarize the offering here. So you, if you look at it in the bottom layer, we have the hardware. You can buy the hardware from Oracle or use any commodity hardware, Dell, HP, Cisco, all are certified companies. I mean, most of, the, most of the X86 hardware vendors are certified. So you put Oracle Linux on top of that. You put a virtualization layer, which is bundled with Oracle Linux on top of that. Then you can create VMs. And uh, on the VMs, you can create actually all flavors. So Red Hat, CentOS, Windows, SUSE, all are supported as a virtual guest operating system. Right, so you have a virtualization manager on top. Oracle Enterprise Manager 13C is your single pane of glass for Oracle stack. You can manage uh, the virtualization layer, the OS layer, as well as the applications, Oracle applications with EM. This entitlement is also bundled, right? So I'm just trying to explain what is Oracle Linux, right? So you asked me to compare, I'm going all out. And what takes it to the next level is case splice, right? So you did talk a little bit about uh, case splice and how uh, some of your customers are using hot patching to apply real-time kernel patches. Now, if you look at it, I've drawn a circle around all this infrastructure, which means case splice can now patch the entire infrastructure, including the virtual machines, including the hypervisor, as well as the containerized uh, you know, applications that you're running on top. So even the containers can be patched in real time. So the entire stack is completely secure <coughs> without any extra cost. So I think this is one of the uh, biggest advantage and uh, integration that Oracle bring to the table on open source. So just to summarize, uh, Oracle Linux is an amalgamation of all these and more at a very low cost. Okay. Uh, so you would lower your licensing and support cost while increase benefits. And that's the advantage of Oracle Linux if you try to compare it with Red Hat. That's great. Um, um, and I'm sure you, know, you can run uh, you know, more slides when it comes into that, but we have a you know, time restriction. Okay, so now let's uh, turn the table you know, on the other side. Uh, Let's not compare with Oracle, uh, you know, with uh, Red Hat Linux. Uh, imagine customers are running their applications or infrastructure on Red Hat Linux, uh, you know, for um, uh, you know for many years, and they want to now uh, migrate to Oracle Linux. Uh, th there are uh, there are commitments from Oracle, uh, which says that any infrastructure which you're running on you know, Red Hat Linux uh, runs absolutely unchanged on. Oracle uh, Linux, and I can vouch for that, no doubt about that, because we have worked, uh, you know, on this similar project. But I would like to know from you is that uh, that's a commitment Oracle gives in public that if you migrate it to Oracle Linux, there's a hundred percent full uh, compatibility of that. Is that true? I mean, uh, is is that the common statement Oracle has been using for years now? Correct. In fact. Uh... I hear, I mean, this is one another question. It is so commonly asked that we put it in the FAQ. Right? And Larry spoke about it uh, from the open world podium this year in open world. So let me just clear all the air, right? So Oracle Linux is 100% compatible with IBM's Red Hat Linux or IBM RHEL. Oracle can support your RHEL installs or Red Hat installations with no migration. We can take on support as it is, okay? In fact, uh, it's been more than 13 years now that we are shipping Oracle Linux as a compatible distribution. In the 13 years, we have not found or nobody has reported a single 
incompatibility bug, which means that any application that you're running runs unmodified. So if you're running, uh, let's say, and that's a testament also to the, you know, 13,000 plus customers, enterprise customers that we have. So think about, you know, large companies like Dell, if they have to move their entire stack, the entire IT from Red Hat Linux to Oracle Linux, how would they do that? They would not be able to completely uninstall and reinstall. That will create a lot of pain, right? And working in pre-sales, you know, uh, my mentor told me one thing when I joined Oracle, that if your customer has a pain and you're no, not a painkiller, then you have no business here, right? <laughs> so I, I stick with that. And uh, frankly, Oracle Linux is 100% compatible. The migration is frictionless. There's not even a reboot required. All you need to do is point your servers to our update network. We allow you to create a local YUM mirror. So if you're, run, if you're familiar with the, the Red Hat satellite server, et cetera, or YUM proxy concept, uh, we let you for free without any extra cost, we let you create a mirror of the entire YUM server. You can set up a private repository within your data center and mirror all the channels. If you don't want to do that, you want to pull patches directly from our CDN, uh, you just point your servers to our network and that's it. And uh, basically cover under a commercial support contract. It applies to everywhere, on-premise, our cloud, somebody else's cloud like AWS, Azure. It doesn't matter where you're running your Red Hat instance. Uh, we will take on support as it is. It's 100% certified. And there are a lot of customers within India who have already done this. I personally helped them over my last eight years in Oracle. I've helped so many customers take on this migration uh, or this switch. I, migration is actually kind of a misnomer. This is, this is a switch of support. Instead of calling Red Hat for support, you start calling Oracle for support. And instead, and it, instead of going to rhn.redhat.com for your sub, uh, patches, you download the, them from linux.oracle.com. It's simple as that. Awesome. I hope uh, that um, answers, yeah. Fantastic. So, so, so we discussed both the things. We discussed on one thing is about uh, comparison. Uh, with Red Hat and uh, which couldn't stop ourselves. And we also saw that if customers have invested a lot on uh, Red Hat um, um, environment, uh, you know, how they can do a painless migration and uh, whatever skills they have built within the company on Red Hat, how they can utilize that, you know, for Oracle Linux also. Um, you know, that takes me to a, you know, very interesting uh, point, uh, you know, which I've been talking to, you know, many um, customers for the last couple of years is about modernizing the customer applications. Uh, and there are many methods uh, customers are thinking, utilizing that, but a uh, lot of customers are asking about microservices. And it has been a key application architecture, uh, you, know, you know, for some time now. Uh, customers are considering that for not just for better performance, but more importantly, the freedom of deployment portability. Uh, because as you rightly said, uh, there will be some applications uh, which will remain on premise. There will be some application which may go to Oracle Cloud, which may go to AWS Cloud. Customers want to keep all this complexity of the platform and the clouds away from the developers. So microservices is, you know, is absolutely going to be a, you know, a key architecture for that. Uh, you know, there are many things like containers, Docker's, Kubernetes, but they all work uh, hand in hand, uh, you know, to achieve the modernization. The challenge customers are facing today is that uh, when they are in the initial stage of deciding the uh, application architecture, they have to do a lot of experimentation. In fact, they are in the typical cycle of doing the experiment, failing it, but failing it faster, doing the re-experiment, and then doing the deployment. And I think that matters a lot. Now, as a customer, many times it happens that you are not able to decide what architecture will prevail at the end because you need to do a lot of experimentation, but you, from a procurement perspective, from a management perspective, you want your vendor to provide all inclusive contract, you know, on, you know, on the OEM. So they don't want different, um, uh, you know, contracts, you know, which are coming from, uh, you know, different vendors or from the same vendor at a different cost. And I remember your slide where you compared uh, that, okay, you want to add uh, support for a particular thing, you, you know, you need to pay extra, I think those complexity Oracle has removed completely. So I, you know, whenever I talk to customer, I always, um, uh, you know, recommend them is that if you're thinking of a microservices, 
consider Oracle Linux as a platform right from your development, staging, testing, deployment platform, uh, because uh, sooner or later, you may take your Oracle um, uh, you know, infrastructure to Oracle Cloud or maybe some other cloud. Why to provide different technologies to your developer, you know, developers and create more complications? So I think Oracle plays a very important role here in, uh, uh, you know, in modernizing the legacy applications on that. I want you to touch upon, I mean, although you had already shown the slide, but I, I would love you can touch upon a few things on the um, uh, cloud native you know, environment and what is Oracle's strategy around it. Sure. Uh, so cloud native, uh, I would say it is as cliche as virtualization was 10 years ago, right? Everything, everybody wants to talk about DevOps. Everybody's talking about cloud native. However, if you look, uh, I mean, let me first start with the promise, right? So cloud native has few promises. The first promise is that it gives you faster time to market, better agility. Uh, you are now exposed to modern tools. So you can do big data analysis much faster. You can do parallelization much easier. Because of cloud, you can deploy and uh, you know scale very very fast. Okay. Uh, also, one of the promises vendor independence. It's very very important to understand this point. Okay. So this is this these are uh, these are the uh, uh, you know key key things that we expect DevOps to deliver. Right. In fact, uh, I I checked a study uh, from DevOps Report and they say thirty six percent of customers use containers in development environment and 31% are using containers in production and 29% are in i mean in both both spaces right so everybody is interested in this now let me you know explain to everybody why there is so much of confusion or why uh, i mean there are no clear directions in most of the organizations even the most mature it companies that i've seen are also evangelizing a lot on this and my next slide summarizes that okay so cloud native journey is a very, very complicated journey today. This is the snapshot of the CNCF, CNCF foundation, cloud native computing foundation. This is the snapshot of the landscape. If you look at the number of logos that are there in each, each area, like if you look at API gateway, there are like 12, 13 companies working on that. There are another nine to 10 companies working on service mesh. So what you, what everybody is worried about is if I choose a vendor or a, a, a I would say opinionated approach, somebody may say, oh, you use uh, Jenkins to do your CI/CD or Travis for CI/CD, right? Then two years later, you may find that, oh, that, that product is not being actively developed anymore. And what do I do? I'm now kind of in kind of lock-in. Right? So everybody tries to avoid lock-in. And that's also a promise of CNCF, right? That you will be in no vendor lock-in at all. So one of the way is that you, uh, buy the products which are 100% aligned to the CNCF. Okay, like Oracle Linux is 100% committed to the CNCF. We are, actually a foundi uh, we are actually a founding platinum member on the CNCF foundation. And we also re release our entire ecosystem of container technologies on CNCF certification, which means that when we release, we will not create a fork of the product, but we will just align with the upstream vendor. What it gives you is an interoperability benefit. For example, if Oracle, I, I'll tell you about our approach, right? So in, in next few slides. So what I'm trying to say is that if today we give you a product and you like, for example, we give you orchestration layer, right? And you like Rancher, for example, Rancher is an open source project upstream. Uh, you like that, right? You can use that. And our product is guaranteed to work with that because Rancher and Oracle Linux, both are CNCF compliant. So you can pick and choose any logo from this and it is supposed to work with Oracle Linux without any friction. So that's a very important point. Now let me explain in next few slides on, I mean, let's, let's just try to simplify all this complex slide that I just shown you. Okay. My objective was not to show you a busy slide. Okay. So typically you have two options, whether you can build your own environment pure from pure open source, or you use a vendor supply distribution. Now the vendor reply, supplied so distribution can be anything. It can be Mirantis, it can be Red Hat OpenShift or Pivotal or anything, you know, a name brand distribution. These are your two choices. Now the benefits of running your own or building your own pure open source product is that you get benefit of the latest, greatest technology. You can run it anywhere, whether on premises, on cloud or anybody's cloud and all the tool sets are free. 
the pro on the vendor supply distribution is everything is pre-tested for you and there is an enterprise support in case you encounter a bug or a complex problem there is a support team sitting just a phone call away okay that's the advantage of a vendor supply distribution the effort to build a diy approach is that there is a lot of effort now in the previous slide i've shown you so many different projects are there to choose so which one do you choose and how do you integrate it there's a lot of uh, effort in that and once you get stuck there is no enterprise support so you're dependent on community so for production rollouts that's a big problem however on the vendor supply distribution you get into a vendor lock-in okay uh, let me ask everybody who is using let's assume that you're using some competitive product pivotal open shift or anything right does your vendor allow you to run an image from outside their ecosystem it's a very important thing to ask because that's that's the fundamental reason why you embarked on this journey of cloud native it was one of the most foundational reason that you want to have openness you want to avoid lock in but if your current platform is putting you into a vendor lock in then maybe you are on the wrong bus so it's a very important thing okay and also if you want to take it to anywhere you'll have to pay for the privilege which means if you want to move from on prem to cloud or if you want to move it from platform a to platform b you're going to have to pay over a period of time it becomes very expensive because the each additional gigabyte of memory that you add into your storage platform is going to cost you money each additional worker node that you're going to add is going to cost you more money right so it gets more and more expensive as you scale the environment what we offer you is a better alternative uh, on cloud native i i've shown you the slide before let me now put it into context so at oracle we give you a suite of open source tools everything is tested together and we and make we make sure that it is very easy to deploy we even build our own tool chain and we release uh, you know to customers without any cost we have built a product called olcne for modular modularized deployment it's already ga it's already available as part of oracle linux offering and uh, again there is no additional cost if you get stuck if you have a complex problem if you hit a bug there is a worldwide enterprise class support team we operate 24 by 7 in, in over 140 countries so you can get support any time of the day from any geography and we also offer you additional deployment options so you can actually deploy this stack on premises on one of our engineered systems on third party machines or also on oracle cloud or non oracle cloud it can be deployed anywhere there is no additional premium or tax that you have to pay if you take things from on prem to cloud okay and again i mean icing on top is that it is much much less than vendor alternatives uh, we are not doing a tco calculation we try to keep this slide more technical uh, i mean this deck more technical and less salesy so we are not doing any comparisons but if you are interested we can do a one on one comparison with you against any vendor that you choose we are very very price competitive we are not even charging you actually if you look at it we are not charging you at all for these technologies these these are part part of your oracle linux or rather operating environment uh, subscription if you will it's part of your os subscription right so there is zero dollar extra cost so how do we do it right how do we bring sanity so we looked at the entire stack and we divided into sub subsections right so there are uh, five simple blocks that we try to create so first of all you need some some tools for app definition and development right? things like database your streaming and messaging applications like kafka and all that so you need those things now to automate that you need a image build process and you need a ci cd tool right uh, for continuous integration and delivery right another uh, block is the orchestration and management of pods because these containers of pods they spawn uh, into a huge number so managing them spawning a pod is very very easy managing a large army of individual containers is a little bit of challenge so you need some tools for that okay and we uh, build upon the industry standard so we have taken kubernetes and we support that uh, with olcne so we have built tool chain for scheduling and orchestration uh, for things like coordination and service discovery or rpc we also included things like sidecars and service proxies and service mesh currently we support istio uh, as a service mesh so we have 
included tools to cover all these important points. Then comes runtime, right? So in fact, most customers uh, that I talk to, they use, the, I mean, there's a misnomer called Docker, right? So they say, oh, runtime is Docker. So Docker is just one of the runtimes. The many different runtimes. In fact, uh, Docker, in my opinion, is not is not the best. I mean, that's my personal opinion. <laughs> Your mileage may vary. Is not the best uh, runtime. Uh, but yeah, Docker is supported, and also we support Cryo, CRIO, Cryo Engine, and uh, Run C today. So we work on the runtimes. So we give you a cloud native storage. We give you a container runtime. So in fact, you get multiple options in the container runtime space. Let me also tell you that we also have already uh, released Kata containers uh, as a container runtime. So Kata containers is a highly secure, isolated container runtime. So the typical isolation issues that you see in containers are taken away by Kata. It's currently released in tech preview, but expect it to go uh, GA uh, in some time. We also give you a cloud native network uh, because there is a requirement for a different namespace network in uh, cloud native environment, so we give you that. And the two more blocks. So next is provisioning, uh, automation and configuration of your entire ecosystem, uh, container registries. We actually have a Oracle registry uh, uh, already. So we actually uh, do two things. One is the Oracle container registry, which is now accessible publicly from anywhere, and you can actually download pre-built containers for things like MySQL, WebLogic, et cetera, uh, from the official channel or the official container registry. We also do a lot of open source development. So people who want to try out or play with the product, we also release Vagrant Boxes. Okay, so Vagrant Boxes gives you uh, ability to easily deploy these in test dev environments to play with the product. Uh, and those Vagrant Boxes are very, very popular in the open source community. We have a GitHub uh, page where we publish all of that. And I, I encourage you to go and visit that. We also build some tool chain around uh, security compliance and key, key management. However, if I go into detail into that, it will take a lot of time. So in the interest of time, let me just summarize it. Also, you need observability and analytics. Uh, so things like, uh, uh, I mean, typically you would use either an ELK stack or some other method for log aggregation and monitoring or for tracing of uh, calls in a cloud native environment because things are loosely coupled and over a period of time, the complexity will increase. So you need a tracing mechanism and we build tool chain again around that. So these are the uh, top areas where we build standard-based CNCF compliant curated set of software. So we take things from different projects upstream, test them, integrate them, and we give it to customers and then we provide them support. And uh, if I were to summarize, you know, that's how we do the cloud native or the CNCF or microservices architecture in Oracle today. And whatever I talk yeah, thanks, is uh, Deepak. used on, yeah, whatever I talked is used on our Gen2 cloud. Actually, uh, a lot of our learnings are from building the Gen2 cloud and we pass on that, them as a value to our customers. Yeah, Shikha, thanks. Uh, great, Deepak. Um, I know it's very painful to talk about microservices only for 10, 15 minutes. We can actually think of considering a full-time uh, in a webinar on this. Uh, there are two things in front of me now. Uh, we have a couple of questions, uh, you know, we'll get into it. But I just want to add one point to one of the use case I have seen, uh, you know, about the microservices, which can, you know, which we can also help. For the customers who are running Oracle Database and Oracle WebLogic, uh, you know, there are, you know, there are methods where uh, you, you can think about the application architecture beyond uh, you know, WebLogic in the sense, you don't have to do anything on the database and WebLogic. Uh, they are completely compatible for the uh, you know, cloud native. You need to consider uh, the application which is considered on top of that. But I'm sure we can take a full scale webinar on uh, Oracle Linux uh, or maybe on the cloud native things. Uh, before we end, I mean, I want uh, you to uh, address some of these questions, but I just want uh, you to talk about just for a couple of minutes is about what next. I mean, uh, I heard about our, um, autonomous Linux, uh, you know, during open world, you know, when autonomous Linux was launched. Is it just a marketing message from Oracle or uh, it's a, you know, it's a kind of strategy? Just, I mean, I'm sorry, I need to give you only two minutes because I want you to answer, you know, some of these questions. Sure, Autonomous Linux was uh, 
was in a lot of talk because Larry announced it. Uh, and whatever Larry announces is cast in stone. So <laughs> Larry is the owner of the company. <laughs> he he built Oracle. Right? So yes, Autonomous Linux is the only uh, autonomous operating system. It can provision itself. It can scale itself. It's a self-tuning, self-patching, automatic, automatically secure operating system. There's a lot of interest around autonomous Linux and it's available on OCI already. So it's already available on OCI. Uh, it comprises of two, uh, three uh, main things, if you ask me technically. It has, I mean, it has a main component called uh, KSplice, which helps it, do, which helps it to automatically do patch management and updating, updations. Uh, apart from that, it, it also auto scales, so that's because of the cloud layer. Right, so we can build a cloud layer on-prem also, but we can't call it autonomous Linux. That's the branded name of uh, autonomous Linux on cloud from on OCI specifically. O uh, autonomous Linux is only available on OCI and uh, as far as I'm, I'm aware so far, there are no plans to make it available on other cloud platforms. However, Oracle Linux with case Splice is available on any cloud. Uh, so I also have a question on the Q&A that uh, somebody's asking, can you get Oracle Linux on AWS or GCC? I don't know what GCC is. So yes, you can use it on AWS, you can use it on Azure, and you can also use it on many other Indian clouds like uh, the Tata Cloud or the Sifi Cloud. Uh, they're also available on those platforms. We do have Oracle Linux images. Yeah, so uh, sorry Shikant, that there is because of shortage of time, I cannot really delve too much onto autonomous Linux, but yes, it is available. It, provisions itself and I told you that behind the scenes kind of hinted you that it uses case splice and an OSMS service which is only available on cloud. So OSMS you can say is the next version or the steroid version of enterprise manager which can automatically tune things. Uh, on premises, I can speak freely on on premises uh, because that's not a web rack thing. Uh, it's not directional, it's already available. So customers can already use Oracle Spacewalk or Oracle Enterprise Manager for provisioning. You can use OLVM, Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager for scaling on-prem. Uh, tuning, uh, you can do through Enterprise Manager because it has uh, dashboards for performance monitoring and management. And you can do all patch management, including hot patching, again through Enterprise Manager or Spacewalk, either of those with case splice. We also have security modules in Enterprise Manager and we do release uh, sticks for OpenSCAP, uh, we actually support even OpenSCAP. I did not talk about that at all because the time is limited. So yeah, all, at least, you know, I would say out of the six items listed there, four or five you can still do. Four, I think you can easily do on-prem and uh, you don't have to go to OCI for that. You can, we can help you do that on any white box x86. Yeah, mm -hmm. but autonomous, I am also keeping a close eye on that. Unfortunately, because uh, uh, there are a lot of things which are not publicly available and it's a public seminar. So I cannot share without NDA, you know, which are things which are directional. No problem. I understand that. Uh, before we end, I mean, uh, let me commit, uh, you, know, you know, one thing to all the participants. I mean, they've been quite patient about, you know, while we both are talking, uh, you know, although there are some, uh, there are a few questions, uh, you know, we will try to answer over here. All these questions are noted and we are going to do two things over here. We will ensure that these questions are answered. We'll try to use some kind of social platform where other people will also come to know about where the questions and answers. And uh, uh, Clover Infotech will be in touch. I mean, our company will be in touch with you to see that if we can help you to decide your strategy on the microservices, help you on the microservice architecture, and at the same time decide your Linux strategy and doing the migration. You know, that's a commitment from our side. Uh, before we end, uh, we have time. I just want you to answer these two questions very quickly. One is um, what Chaitanya has asked. Sure, so Chaitanya is asking, uh, uh, they use, they're already using Oracle yeah, Linux uh, and VM and how it will benefit them for Linux KVM. Okay, so yes, so Oracle Linux KVM is part of the entitlement. If you're using Oracle VM, you can actually plan for a migration from Oracle VM to Oracle Linux virtualization, you'd have to build a few servers and then plan for a migration. We build, we give the world V2V tool and you can also take advantage of our partner team 
uh, on ground which can help you so clover team is skilled in this they've done it for a few customers already so uh, so the clear benefit for you is that you don't have to uh, use ovm anymore you can save that cost once you do the migration you don't have to buy ovm separately oracle linux is sufficient so this is the first time you're hearing a person from the sales team saying that you don't have to buy <laughs> right so oracle linux entitlement already has virtualization you can use that uh, and so it's lower cost and you can do hard partitioning with that also you'll get advantages of uh, kvm like uh, snapshots or rbac you can also run hosted engine so i think those are the top things okay another question okay. Uh, how is the iops difference between other no, cloud and oracle cloud i'm sorry um, i'm sorry there's a question before that if you can talk about in memory and flash cache you know which you mentioned if you're able to uh, okay if you want to answer now you can do it as offline sure so in memory and flash cache so flash cache, uh, database smart flash cache is a specific database feature wherein you can put your secondary cache so database has typically has two cache the first cache the, or the primary cache is always in memory it always runs in ram the secondary cache is typically kept on a spindle based or your traditional hard drive and by putting that on a flash card pci flash card you can greatly improve your warm data so in database there are concepts of database uh, of the data tiering right so the most commonly asked data is called the hot data it's always in memory the warm data which is less frequently asked is now kept on a flash card which is near performance i mean in performance it's nearly the same as memory so it's a, it's a way to improve your database performance i hope that answers your question if you have more if you want to understand more about that or in more detail we can connect offline uh, reach to nandini reach out to yeah. nandini and then she can you know align a call i understand i understand uh, there was another question but uh, pranjay i'm sorry we are uh, uh, over on that but your question has been noted and we'll ensure that uh, we will answer those and we'll also help other people to understand your question and what is our response to it uh, let me summarize let me thank uh, deepak for his time and uh, you know it's so difficult to put all those things in one hour uh, thanks to our team in clover who arranged uh, this uh, you know it's crucial time and i look we look forward to conduct uh, you know you know these kind of sessions for you guys uh, to see that how the enterprises can use this so thank you very much uh, be safe uh, you know i uh, and 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 i look forward to uh, see you again thank you very much thank you shrikant thanks everybody uh, if there are questions you know just send them uh, after the link we'll we'll share a i'll share my email address i think that if that's okay uh, as a post survey and then you can ask more questions or ask sure. reach out to nandini and clover team thank you uh, we'll answer all your queries yeah thank you shrikant yeah. thanks everybody thank for joining us thanks thanks guys